morning. I'm Dr. Kevin Collins. I'm a physician here at Florida Gulf Coast University Student Health Services. I'm the medical director of uh, clinical services and I've been here for approximately two years. And this morning we're going to talk a little bit about uh, insect bites, in particular uh, bee stings and what to do if that uh, happens to you while you're out on campus or out in uh, public spaces. And the best thing to do is avoid getting stung in the first place. Uh, bees will only sting you if they feel threatened, if you step on them uh, and try to get into their food source or their nest. So if you see a swarm of bees, you definitely want to stay away from them. However, even if you do that, you could still get stung. Uh, bee stings are very, very common. There's certainly more bees in the country than there are people. Um, what you need to do if you get stung by a bee is not panic. Uh, most people are not allergic to bees. Uh, maybe 2% uh, of the population has an allergy to bees and they can have a serious reaction, but for the rest of us, 98% of us, a bee sting is simply something that's going to be very painful. The pain is going to develop at the site of the sting, and then there's going to be redness around that area. And what you want to do if you're stung by a bee is try to remove the stinger, if you can, as quickly as you see it. You can use a, a credit card to push it away or something to, to pick it out. The idea is try to get the stinger out, but you have to do that pretty quickly uh, for that to be an effective treatment. The next thing to do is to apply ice to the area. And you don't want to apply ice to cause frostbite, so you don't want to leave it on there forever, but if you get an ice cube or a bag of ice and put it on the area, that'll help the pain a great deal. So while elevating the area and try to avoid rubbing the area. Uh, typically the pain will go away within you know, 15 to 30 minutes and that's all you need to do for an insect uh, bee sting. Additional measures you can do if there's itching in the area, you can take a, a pill like Benadryl. Um, uh, but uh, other thing you can do is take some pain pills like Motrin or Advil or Aleve to help you with the pain. The biggest thing to do is apply ice. If you're one of those rare people who has a severe allergy to bee stings, you could develop anaphylaxis. And what anaphylaxis is, is when a patient uh, develops systemic, meaning a reaction that's far away from the site of the sting. If that happens, particularly if you develop hoarseness of your voice, swelling of your throat, or breathing problems, you need to seek immediate medical care because you're going to need to be treated with some medications to prevent your throat from swelling. Uh, if you know you're allergic to bees, you've had that type of reaction before, you should carry something called an EpiPen. Uh, EpiPen is a prescription medication that you you'd need to purchase at the pharmacy and it basically contains epinephrine. And so if you know you have a severe allergy to bees, you should carry an EpiPen with you. Um, and if you get a bee sting and you've had a previous severe allergy, you need to self-administer the EpiPen. It's very simple to do. Basically, you'll have it in your purse or in your backpack in a container. Uh, you just open the container and you remove, step one, you remove this gray and that's where the needle is. Step two, you remove the other gray end. And basically what you want to do is just push it into your uh, thigh, the thigh muscle here, the anterior, meaning the top surface, lateral. And it can be done right through clothing, uh, but if you're wearing shorts or a skirt or something, you can just raise it up and not go through the clothing. That's probably better, but it is perfectly safe. It's designed, you can use it right through clothing. And basically you just push it onto your, your thigh you push it in and you hold it there for 10 seconds. It's an auto-injector. It'll inject epinephrine and that prevents the uh, severe anaphylactic reactions. So if you know you have a severe allergy, make sure you have an EpiPen which is up to date, not expired, and uh, you should carry it with you at all times. So hopefully this is some helpful information. And remember you can always come to Student Health if you have questions about this or any other uh, concerns related to your health.